Yeah, the main thing and why the strike is on and it still keeps raging on is because Royal Mail are pressing ahead with all their modernisation plans. And traditionally, if they want to change something, they would come to us and negotiate with us. And if there was changes in working practices that involved people working harder or giving up something, they would compensate people with some form of uh, remuneration, pay or extra allowances. And we're at the stage now where Royal Mail have taken a really, really aggressive stance and just ploughing on and doing things without agreement from the union and bullying and harassing our members by, uh, by just changing things and making them work harder with no extra pay. They make vast profits. They're still paying large amounts of money into the pension fund because of a gov government sort of uh, agreed pensions holiday it's up for 13 years. When the government and Peter Manderson wanted to... Uh, wanted to part privatise the post office, he accepted that they had responsibilities both for the pensions and the regulation so that Royal Mail got paid a proper price and that they didn't have to pay all this money into a pension fund for the next 18 years. Um, but then when, he, when the union and uh, the MPs stopped him from part privatising the post office, he basically said, well, you can't have the other two things. He realised they were problems, but really he sort of acted a bit like a spoiled child and sort of said, well, if I can't have my way on one thing, then I'm going to take my ball out. And I just think it's pathetic that you've got a government minister who, in essence, is deputy prime minister in all but name, who can act in such a childish manner and then cause all of, all of these issues. Well, I've been to the eight delivery office this morning uh, and just got to fish ponds. Um, all our other representatives have been to many, many other delivery offices, and it seems as though you know, everyone understands what they're fighting for is, is whether they're going to have a job worth having in, in the industry, in the industry. Um, and also whether they actually have a say in what happens in, in their workplace. So there are a lot of things up for grabs and I can see the advantages in Royal Mail because they would like a non-unionised workforce which they could just bully and cajole into doing anything that they want. Yeah, the situation with the competitors is that they cherry pick all of the really easy work and then they put it into all of our mail centres and then they send it on to the delivery, office, delivery offices but the government actually enforced a 13p cap on it because Royal Mail and the competitors couldn't agree a cost and, it, and in essence that's why Royal Mail are losing sort of virtually 100% or well, 50% of all the, uh, the cost of the, the work that they have to do so by actually sorting out that regu that the regulatory reform and making it so that there's a realistic cost of something like double the amount that they're currently getting, that would actually give Royal Mail a lot more money so that they could actually reward their staff properly rather than saying, we can't, we, we can't afford it, so you, you've all got to do all these changes for nothing. Well, the, the, the SCAB office in, um, in Severn Beach is, I understand, working. The union is currently taking legal advice as to whether it's actually breaking the law. There's supposed to be some legislation that says you're not allowed to employ agency people to do the work of uh, workers that are on a legitimate ballot in strike. I think the strength of the union by the constant strikes that have been going on and the announcement of further strikes for next week, hopefully, will force them to talk sensibly when they're around the negotiating table and come up with something which, which our union can then recommend to its members.